Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So this will be a quick video today. I made a few changes to the design that I want to talk about. And I also made a few parts so we can get the XY assembly uh, finished up. So I got the print head finished, uh, or the thing that moves back and forth. And I got the bottom part here. You can see the four linear bearings go in here and we can mount the extruder there uh, and we have room for the belt here. I also made this belt holder that will kind of pinch the belt in between there and it has the correct spacing for the teeth. So on top of this we will have the other part and I might change this later on actually. Uh, so I have room for some fan mounts and stuff like that. It will get screwed together and uh, the job of this one is basically just to keep the bearings in place. But I also added this little stud here to kind of uh, hold the filament guide tube and the wires with a little zip tie. But uh, I already figured out that I have the extruder mounted on here so the filament guide tube will come up like yeah, I better just show it. You can see the filament guide tube comes up right there and if I have to bend that in to meet this one that will be quite a bend so I probably should have moved this forward a little bit and then made one of these bumps here as well. I'll probably change that later on but Thankfully we can just unscrew this and screw the new one in place. So to get these installed we'll have to take this apart again, just pull the shafts out of the bearings here. Then we'll have to shorten these so they are um, half a meter, they are a little bit longer now. Then we'll have to press these shafts into these blocks and get the correct distance between them. And we have to remember to put the bearings on, of course. We will also have to add the rest of the pulleys to these two. And then we're basically done. I don't know if I will shorten the shaft on this one yet. Um, I didn't make the, the locking ring for this side yet. So I'll just use a pulley uh, so far. Maybe I'll just end up using one of these pulleys, actually. So, let's get uh, started. So, I got the shafts for the bearings shortened down a little bit on the grinder. Uh, and I gave these a little taper on the ends as well. I don't really need to shorten these that have to go in here because they just they can just uh, go as deep as they want. But uh, let's see if we will be able to get it in there because uh, the other ones were a little tight some of them. So I just had to go and pass a drill through this uh, a couple of times. So now it's it's working out a little bit better. So I got them to where they are almost uh, at the end here. If all the measurements are spot on, they should be like two and a half millimeter from the edge here. But I can't rely on that, so I'll have to measure the inside uh, length here when I get the other plug on. But uh, let's just try and assemble this one and see if we can uh, slide it on there. Yep, 
Yeah, it's almost like it was meant to to go on here. Of course, we can't rely on it yet because this end is not uh, fastened, but it, it doesn't get any tighter uh, down at this end, and it would if the measurements were off. So. Yeah, actually, let's just leave this on. Because it would be a pretty bad idea to forget to put these on. <laughs> there is actually a little difference in the thickness of these uh, shafts here. You can see this bearing can drop by itself. And these over here require a little bit of force actually. And uh, you can see it's not the bearings. But I guess that's what you get when you buy the cheap stuff. But uh, I think it will do. So now we just have to get this one on here. Oops, I'm sorry if things have been a little bit uh, blurry or unsharp until now, because I forgot to turn the manual focus off. Oops. So my measurement here between the inside of these two red blocks needs to be 48.6 uh, centimeter. Basically 50 centimeters for the shaft, minus uh, 7 millimeters for each of the bearings. So this basically tells me that I need to hammer this two millimeters further down so I can get to yeah, 48.6. It uh, doesn't really matter if I get it exact. Uh, I can always change the width of these blocks later on. I just have to do the same in, in both sides to make sure that, that, uh, that these two, this one and that one get parallel. If they are, you know, if they like taper in, then this will get stuck on the way down there, and that will not be good. But thankfully, it's it's easy to add just a tiny shim behind one of these blocks if I need to move it back and forth a little bit. So it won't be the end of the world if we don't get it perfect, but we just want to get it, you know, at least within a millimeter or something like that. And uh, now I just need something to put underneath here while I hammer on it, because the red blocks here can, uh, they touch the table first, so we'll need to raise it a little bit. Yeah, so we need one more millimeter to hit the 48.6. And we'll just repeat. So that should be around there. So it looks like uh, we're about there uh, now. Except that... Uh, yeah, so we, we just had a little bit of tension in this. Uh, right here. It was just because I got the end digging into this plastic block here. Um, so I just had to move it uh, a little bit out of this bearing and a little further into this one. So Maybe maybe I should have put some metal discs uh, like brass or something uh, behind the bearings and added a bit of grease or something to those so they 
they couldn't uh, dig into the plastic but I don't think it will be a problem when the printer is running but we can always uh, change that later but anyway let's try to get the print head installed also So these holes are a little tight, uh, but I will have to add a nut to the other side anyway. So we got this working as well, and uh, as you can see it does slide, and it's not uh, tight or anything. Uh, there's, no, uh, there's no play either, that's for sure. So I think it's pretty good. Uh, you might be able to see that it looks like it's it's twisting a little bit or what should we say this end here is further down than this end but it's just the way that the linear bearings sit in there uh, I can press it down a little in that end and it will probably get better but I'm sure when I tighten this down uh, they won't move and then it doesn't really matter if if one end is a little bit lower than the other because it's it does stay the same uh, along the entire travel. So let me just clean up a little bit and we'll have to see if the belt will actually fit uh, on here to see if we we got the correct height on the bottom part because as you can see we got a little bit of a gap in here uh, probably because these holes are a little undersized for the bearings um, and that wasn't really the plan that this hole should be there so I think we might be a little off on the belt height here. So I think I got everything that we need uh, and we'll install the shaft again. And I don't know if you can see that, but it looks like it is a little bit too low, uh, the print head there. But uh, let me try and move it to one of the ends. Well, that is not much, but maybe like half a millimeter. I think we will live with that. And it uh, makes sense because I think this gap is just a bit over one millimeter. So the holes in the block here, I just tapped those with a with a tap, so I can screw the bolts in directly. I don't think we need that much torque on these, so I think the plastic will hold just fine. So maybe I should put a little washer in between these two, but again, it's not that bad. And of course I'll have to make sure to line it up with the pulley on the motor here and also the one in the other end. But that shouldn't really be a problem because you can see I can easily move the pulley on the shaft here and I can also move the belt in about one or one and a half millimeter still. So that should be just fine. I won't cut and install the belt just yet in case there is something I need to change uh, later on. So I'll do that when I install it in, in the box. So now that I know this is going to work uh, I can cut this shaft so I just 
marked it here. Uh, I can always shorten it a little bit if I end up not using uh, one of these pulleys to lock the other side here. I have enough of these so that is probably what I'm going to do but uh, yeah, no one's gonna see it anyway so. <laughs> so I got it cut to length and uh, So, I think we are pretty much done with this part now, and I don't believe I forgot anything. <laughs> Maybe you noticed that I put this extra pulley on the wrong uh, shaft there, but it wasn't a problem to get that fixed. I could just lift these out of the bearings and then move it to the other side. So now we should basically be able to measure how wide we can print just by measuring from this block to the bottom of this block. And uh, let's do that. So there is 37.3 centimeters so let's call that 37 or 36. So very close to the 35 that I estimated before I started. And in the other direction here we got 39 centimeters. So now that we got the XY axis all sorted out, then we can start to take a look at the Z axis or the Z axis. Whatever you want to call it. So let's get this out of the way. So originally I was going to use this uh, trapezial screw here for the Z axis to lift the print bed up and down but as we discussed uh, this is almost going to be 40 by 40 centimeters which means that a lot of weight will be put on here and if we make something similar to the flash forge here that will probably be too wobbly um, out in 40 centimeters here this is only 15 centimeters so we will need uh, almost three times the length of this one. Well it could probably work but uh, I also need a print bed and some kind of heating element and if I have to buy a piece of aluminium in 40 by 40 uh, by 6 millimeters that have been at least milled if not uh, surface grinded then that will cost a fortune so I have to go with a glass plate instead and um, the plate that I ordered, uh, it weighs 4 kilos. So that's the next problem because uh, the screw here advances 8 millimeters per revolution and the stepper motor will probably not be able to, to move that. So I decided to change the design to something a little more stable than this method here. So what I'm going to do instead is to put four of these hard plated linear shafts, uh, one in each corner. And then at each side of the printer I'll put a, a lead screw. And I got some 12mm screws instead that will advance I think it's 1.5mm per revolution. So this is just standard metric frets and not uh, the trapezial ones like this one. So these got a little more play in them, but I think it will be just fine because now the build plate will be so heavy that it will always rest on the on the bottom of the frets. And I got my brother to turn down the ends of these shafts here so the bearings can fit on. I will probably put two here and then there's still room for either a pulley or a connection to the motor. I don't know yet if I'll use pulleys or I'll just attach the motor to the bottom of the shaft here. It will be resting on these bearings so I know we should really use some thrust bearings for this but I think these will be just fine. If not we can always change them. I also ordered a second stable motor so that I can use a motor for each of these. I think I'll end up using two stepper motors because the belt that I needed 
around this uh, if I were to use only one motor. That has to be a closed belt. And the thing is that they are actually more expensive than the motor, so uh, that's why I decided that. And that will also give me double the power in case there should be problems driving this, but I don't think there will, uh, since this is much finer fret than, than the other one. And on the top here, we also have room for a bearing. And this doesn't have to be precise, actually. Uh, it's just to keep it in place. On the flash forge, there is no bearing. It's just uh, a hole in the plastic that the end of the shaft sticks up into. It's only the linear shafts that have to be fixed. Uh, this one doesn't really matter, because the nut will, will keep it aligned anyway. Speaking of nuts, I got uh, two of these that are actually designed to hold two of these threaded rods together. And they go on here just like that. And then I'll make some brackets that will hold these to the print bed. So when these rotate they will move the print bed of course. And you can see this is much much finer thread than this one here. You can see when I spin this it really moves. So you can see this actually can spin by itself just by the weight of the nut here. Imagine what would happen if I put four kilos on top of this. That's why I think my motor might not be able to handle it. I do also have a bigger stepper motor but uh, then I don't know if my uh, ramps, the, the circuit board, will be able to provide enough current. So that's why I chose to go with these instead. So in the previous video I showed the extruder here and I said that it would be mounted with these two screws into the printhead here and that's also what I'm going to do. But you can see it drops down very far. I then said that I wanted to add a fan here and mill out some slots in the back of this. Well, I kind of changed my mind a little bit on this also, because I think we can do better than that. So I want to redesign it a little bit. Uh, this part here is 25 millimeters right now, or thereabouts. Almost, at least. It was uh, supposed to be, but I want to make this block 25 millimeters tall as well. So that way I can mount the fan on the side here, as you see shown here, and then mill the slots into the side. I will, I will do more than two, it was just so I didn't have to draw that much. And then if I need it, I can also add a fan on the other side. That way I will also be able to shorten this about 25 millimeters, so it will not look uh, like this. <laughs> so here is the extruder mounted on the print head here, or the the extruding part of the extruder because I haven't made the, the motor part yet. Don't really know what this thing is called. <laughs> well we got the hot end down here but the rest of it, I would say that's part of the extruder, but correct me if I'm wrong. So now we can kind of move this around and I put it up on some coke cans here just to simulate uh, it being in the printer and it uh, seems like everything runs like it should and uh, by the way of course we need some belts uh, oh that's tight Well, anyway, what I was going to say is that we need some belts going from 
here to here of course and the belt holder that is going to be on top of this I'll just uh, reuse the one I use on the bottom of this one. I will make some holes in the cat drawing for this part uh, but for my unit I'll just uh, drill some holes and and use uh, regular screws but but for the one I upload to Fingerworks and my website I will uh, make some proper holes that you can tap and use uh, regular screws. And yes by the way all the parts here are on Fingerworks already so you can uh, have a look at them. But well as I said before I might change some of these parts like uh, move this little start on this one a bit further so it will line up with the filament guide tube a little bit better here. And things like making these holes and all kind of things. So so it will probably be improved a little bit uh, but you can get the files if you want them. So There will be a link down in the description also. So I think that was pretty much it for this video. Uh, now I will have to wait for the glass plate to arrive and I'll have to make some brackets both to hold the build plate here but also to hold the shafts uh, fixed against the case or the box. And also some that will take the bearings for the threaded rods here. And I'll probably have to make these so that I can like make them like a clamp so I can put a bolt through and tighten them up because I will need uh, to get the shaft out of the other end as you see here. Uh, these ones I didn't have to have a hole in the back so I don't really have to make a clamp for those. I could also just make a smaller hole in the middle uh, like these ones but it's just if the hole is deeper I will never be able to get the bottom bearing out and I do want to put two in the bottom of this uh, just because it's not really supposed to take weight uh, from this side it's only decided to roll like this so I'll actually put these bearings the other way around so my good bearing will be the top one and this cheap crap one will be at the bottom so that uh, this will take the weight off it so thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it the thumbs up. That helps a lot. You're of course welcome to leave some comments. And I hope to see you in the next one. See ya.